I made a personal decision that if there ever was an opportunity to have conversations about race um, and the impact of racism at work or you know my personal life that I was going to take that opportunity so as I was preparing to come back to work I saw this email all desk email that went out about reverse mentoring um, and I thought this is an opportunity. Yeah, I remember at the time we had quite a few staff conversations mm. with led by the Black Asian Minority Ethnic Network and I remember a huge attendance, mm. especially after the death of George Floyd. Mm. And um, the big phrase that the chair of the network, um, Ali Khan, used was, um, I can't breathe, mm. for not being able to speak, mm. not be able to be seen, not, mm. not to be acknowledged yes. in a group of people. And yes, yes. so that's, that stayed with me. And, um, and it felt overwhelming, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a real kind of reckoning, wasn't it, mm. that moment? Um, and that phrase represented so much. It was more than just the physical, I can't breathe. It, it really felt like um, a final acknowledgement of years of experiencing this and maybe not having, not feeling like you had a voice to express it. I remember thinking, oh, uh, you know, I think I'm quite um, uh, 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 an inclusive leader and really mm -hmm. passionate about mm -hmm. discrimination and I was wondering what's this going to teach me and do I want to get into a very personal emotional mm. space mm. and I remember being really daunted by that and probably quite a little bit resistant. Coming into that first meeting there was a lot of kind of wow okay I'm feeling anxious about the subject matter I'm feeling anxious about um, talking about it at work and then I'm feeling anxious about who the person is that I have to have this conversation with. Um, but I just thought, I'm just going to be vulnerable about all of that. We're just two people having a conversation. You kind of are already thinking, what, um, what else is there for me to learn? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and I think um, what I've really valued about our conversations is that we've both been able to be open about that yeah. with each other. Yeah, and I, I feel like once we can have this conversation um, openly and honestly and truthfully, then that's the beginning of change. Because mm. if it's kind of there, but we don't talk about it, because I suppose there's fear of the discomfort. Mm. And, you know, be, be compassionate, be truthful, mm. inspire reflection, but, but be kind with it. Because I think that, that does then create that safety that mm. um, facilitates that honest dialogue. I think it was the first conversation um, and one of my, my big themes as a, as a white leader is um, being hesitant to talk about being anti-racist mm -hmm. and almost feeling it's not my place. Mm -hmm. um, and you said to me, um, words to the effect of, by not speaking about racism, mm -hmm. you invalidate me. Mm -hmm. and, it was, and I think it was the personal connection with you mm -hmm knowing you, having mm. spent time, really helped me build a commitment that whenever I'm on a platform, mm. I will um, make every effort to talk mm. about leadership's responsibility mm. in the health service, in public service, yeah. to be anti-racist. Yeah. You know, I really want to kind of invite white leaders to recognise, and not just leaders, I think probably every white person, that the only way forward to change things, if we want equality, health equality, and um, to be honest, every sphere of life, we want everybody to feel like they're equal. Mm. We is actually white people have to speak. And um, my mm. fundamental belief is that all people employed by mm. public services have a leadership responsibility mm. to their communities and how they conduct themselves. But really, really importantly, that we work to develop a culture inside our organisations with our partners where we um, cre create the psychological safety that you talk about um, to be really conscious mm. of our own uh, privileges and biases yeah. so that we um, don't inadvertently or yeah. unconsciously create a problem for individuals or groups of people so therefore we can't possibly engage yes. to address health inequalities yeah. until we've really 
got a kind, compassionate, inclusive culture for all. So I felt like a courage actually to, and an empowerment to um, speak about it and being heard and say things that actually I've wanted to say for a very long time um, and to be listened to and validated and you know I felt like that was something you gave me and you know it's if I really want this conversation to be had I need to step into every space I can have it and I saw that as an opportunity which wouldn't normally present itself and I think you know back to what you said that personal introspective work really ought to be done by everybody um, black and white everybody in in the health care system and because systems are made of people. So I think we've got to do the personal work and then it comes out in the work we do and it has an impact on, on the populations we serve. We have to be really careful and thoughtful about working with colleagues who we're inviting to talk about profoundly traumatic experience. You know, discrimination, direct, indirect, is a, is a form of abuse. Yes and um, it has a, a deeply psychological impact. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, part of the learning uh, for us as we're trying to move, develop as a system is uh, to have those conversations with that consciousness, mm -hmm. that you can't expose people and ask people mm -hmm. to share without being really careful and thoughtful about support. Mm -hmm. We've had um, increasingly building compassionate, kind, inclusive cultures. Mm -hmm. um, as, as, as a leader, I've, I've had to think about that human dimension of leadership mm -hmm. in a very um, solid, concrete way mm -hmm. for whenever we, we get together with groups or individuals. I suppose my reflection has been, how do we embed it? It's very clear that, wow, we have a long way to go to understand we can actually speak about particular things and those things are not racist. It's mm. actually just speaking freely about culture, about you know somebody's experience as a black person and it's not weird and it shouldn't be weird and awkward. I'm quite passionate about, about inspiring confidence or building confidence in black people to say actually you can do it. Um, but we struggle, probably struggle more with imposter syndrome. And then that's been my journey of kind of wrestling. There's such lessons for leadership generally, isn't yeah. there, in not making assumptions about people and always asking curious questions yeah. from a position of kindness rather yes. than curiosity. And think about white privilege now, and white privilege is that invisible knapsack of, of privilege that you're, you're, you're walking around but you're not aware of the advantage you have because you're the majority, mm. and uh, you know, yeah. and everything is centred on whiteness, actually. So you don't know um, what life is like for someone who doesn't have that, um, who doesn't have that privilege, who is disadvantaged, and has to walk the same journey. Yeah. I think my big learning is that, um, as as a leader, um, in terms of working well mm. with people, developing inclusive cultures mm. and teams. Um, you've really got to know yourself, mm -hmm. uh, be more aware of yourself and you, who you are and where you've come from mm -hmm. and what, what biases that creates, but particularly in the context of race as a white leader, the privileges you've, you've had mm -hmm. that are just not available to people mm -hmm. from a different ethnic background to yourself. Mm -hmm. For me, this is this pro process, this, these conversations with you mm. have really helped my thinking as a leader and my personal development to understand the importance that this kind of conversation needs mm. to happen everywhere, mm. all the time in the leadership mm. space to really help us then move and understand what we haven't noticed, what we haven't paid attention to, rather than get a bit overwhelmed sometimes by the shame and embarrassment of what yes. we don't know yeah. and yeah. what we haven't addressed. I'm reflecting on shame because that's a word um, I've heard every time I've engaged in these kinds of conversations when people have been really honest. I think it can be, um, you know, I don't want anybody to feel shame that is paralysing. Mm. 
rather kind of the, the shame that is galvanizing that kind of pushes you forward and yeah. actually it, this I can use this reaction to um, to act mm. so I suppose it's it's following on from the conversation is is action I want I want there to be action whatever any kind of action I think is just doing something um, and continuing to educate the more I think about it the more I think you have to s slow down to be able to help really um, people talk about really difficult stuff because yeah. actually it, my belief is it helps re-energise people as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking now um, as a leader of an integrated care system where the core function is to address health inequalities and reduce the gap for the ri richest and poor poorest those from different ethnic by backgrounds and poor health outcomes, that the more that I'm thinking about it, that, that my job as a leader and leaders' jobs across public service and partners mm -hmm. is about really understanding how we are all connected, mm -hmm. that the negative consequences of not really understanding that connectivity um, are profound, and I would encourage everyone to take the risk, mm. to be curious, to be um, have conversations that would f really frighten them mm. normally because it's working in an area that of, of uh, lack of confidence, mm. but leadership requires courage. I want to encourage um, maybe rather than one-off um, incidences, you know, maybe a training session, but actually more ongoing um, dialogue and thinking about when we have that dialogue we can approach it without judgment and we can say let's all come here as we are let's be open about where we are all of us white and black and let's think about when we leave this conversation how we um, don't make sure we continue to extend that safety because you know a black person will come in and might not speak because they're concerned of what will come back later. Um, a white person might not speak because they have the same concerns. But actually, let's come without judgment. Let's come with courage and compassion. Let's have the conversation, um, and let's keep having the conversation. Let it become part of our culture um, and normal for us. And then we will begin to understand each other better. I think. Um, to move forward and change things.